So welcome all of you. Uh, my name is uh, Silvia Dominguez Martinez. I'm the program director of uh, the Bachelor in Economics and Business Economics, and I'm going to give you an overview about the program. And uh, of course, I have uh, fortunately many colleagues helping me. So uh, we will also uh, give you an idea why you should uh, study economics and business economics at the UFA. And uh, we have first hand experiences from our students, uh, Judith and uh, Thomas. And we will talk about next steps. But um, if, before uh, getting there, let me say something about the program. So we have a very standard uh, bachelor program, so three years, in total six semesters. And what is particular about our program is that uh, you start with a basis in economics and business economics. So these are the first three semesters. And then in the last three semesters, you specialize in either the major economics or the major business economics. The benefits of having this structure is that you can postpone your choice between economics and business economics until the end of semester one of year two. That means that during the first one and a half years, you can experience different courses in economics and business economics and use this to make a better choice between either the major economics or business economics. So making an informed decision based on experiences is always uh, a good way of making your decision for one of the two majors. So during the one and a half years, you experience both majors and you can make a better choice. But it is also beneficial that during this one and a half years, you are exposed to both economics and business economics. So you get a broad basis that later on during uh, your work will be important because at the workforce, you will be working with different types of people from different backgrounds. And then it's good that you have had both some economics and some business economics. So let me now go into more detail of the different years. So we start with the first year of uh, the Bachelor in Economics and Business Economics. What you can see is that each year is consists of two semesters and each semester consists of three periods where period one and period two are periods of eight weeks and period three is a period of four weeks. So very small block. So in period one and period two, you get mostly content courses in the first semester and the second semester. And the third period, we do skills. So in the first semester, the focus will be on academic writing skills and in the second semester on research skills. So you will do your first own empirical research. Then in the large blocks, so the periods one and two, you get content courses. And these content courses consist of microeconomics and macroeconomics, which are the courses that are mostly connected to the major in economics. We have courses that are connected to the major in business economics. This is financial accounting one, finance and economics of markets and organizations. And Economics is a quantitative study and analytical and quantitative skills are very important. That is why we also pay attention to mathematics and statistics in the first year of your studies. So this gives an overview about the type of courses that you can expect. And I want to highlight one, and that's the first course that you will get during our program, the principles of economics and business one. The reason why I highlight this course is because if you are interested in a bachelor in economics and business economics, you might have attended other universities and mostly within the Netherlands, there's not much variation in the type of courses that you will have. So you will always get some foundation in micro and macro, and you will get some foundation in business economics courses. So in that respect, there's not much variation. So also all uh, bachelor programs will pay attention to mathematics and statistics. One course that uh, you don't see in all bachelor programs is the course in principles of economics and business economics business. So in this course, you are immediately in the first block exposed to guest lectures from professors. So that are working in the university, but also from prominent economists that are working in industry. So you will get guest lectures by prominent economists, both in science and in the industry. 
besides that, you will also be exposed to the early readings in economics and business. And finally, it will be your first contact with academic thinking and academic writing. So it's a mix of the uh, history of economic thought, but also the current state of economics where people that are working in prominent economists that are working in uh, science, but also in the industry, share their views on uh, different topics related to economics and business. Then in year two, as I mentioned, in the, after the first semester, you make a choice for your major. So either you choose the major economics or you choose the major business economics. Then within the major of economics, you follow additional courses related to economics. So you follow more micro and macro, and you get a bit more mathematics. And uh, in uh, the major of business economics, you follow advanced courses in business economics. So remember that one benefit of the structure of our program is that you can postpone your choice for economics and business economics until the end of the first semester of year two, and you get time to experience the different types of courses and also what economics is exactly about and what business economics is about. Then in year three, you can follow your interests. So in year three, you get a lot of freedom to make your own choices, of course, within some limits, but to a large extent, you can design your own program. So in the first semester, we offer you the opportunity to follow an internship, to study abroad, or to follow a minor. So an internship means that you go to a company and you apply your knowledge about economics, so the theoretical knowledge that you have acquired during your studies, to solve a problem within this company. So it's really applying the knowledge that you acquired during your studies to a business problem. You also can go uh, study abroad. That means that you go to one of our partner universities and you follow a semester at the partner university. We uh, have partner universities all over the world. This means that you could go to any place in the world uh, and follow a semester there. Studying abroad is also a nice alternative because it gives you the opportunity to learn a new culture, to learn a new educational system and uh, still uh, use it within your studies. And then the third option that we offer is that you can follow a minor. So a minor is a structured program of a semester and you can follow. So there is a, a large offer of minors. So some stu students, they want to follow a minor that is very closely connected to economics. So, for example, the minor in sustainability and economics, but other students, they have very broad interests and they use the minor space to follow a minor, for example, art history. So there's a lot of possibilities to either deepen your knowledge or to broaden your knowledge by following a minor uh, in the first semester of year three. And then in the second semester, you follow your specialization. So to a large extent, the third year is really about making your own choices and choosing what fits your interests. So, but Perhaps you want to know a bit more about what economics is about and what business economics is about. So when we think about economics, we are thinking about the use and allocation of scarce, alternatively applicable resources. It's about economic decisions of individuals and countries. So all of you have to make a decision which study to follow. So if you choose to follow economics at the University of Amsterdam, then you cannot follow another study at a different university at the same time because your time is scarce. So you have to make a decision whether to follow it at the UVA or at another place. So this is an economic decision. But when we think about economics, we also think about the implications that this might have for economic policy. Within economics, we distinguish between micro and macroeconomics. So I included uh, an, uh, an example about something that economists are, are interested about. So um, in the past few years, Google received many fines uh, for abusing their dominant position on the market of search engines. So they were violating the antitrust regulation of the European Union. The idea was that they were 
making um, their own search comparison engines more attractive. So they were placing them, them on uh, a nicer place in the Google site so that uh, so it was more clearly visible for consumers so that it was more likely that consumers would use these comparison sites than other comparison sites, uh, the comparison sites of competitors. So what the European Union decided was that uh, Google was abusing the dominant position. Therefore, it was also reducing the options that consumers had, and this can go or this can reduce uh, the welfare of consumers. So they received a huge fine. So Google is still fighting uh, against this fine, but uh, it's an example about topics that are important within economics. So what are the implications of decisions or how does economic policy try to make or try to protect consumers uh, in these type of uh, situations? When we think about business economics, what you do is we use the economic toolbox and we apply it to decisions within firms. So it's really about decisions of firms. Uh, it's about uh, investment decisions. It's about decisions about which type of information to report. Uh, it's decisions about how to motivate people within organizations. So it's really decisions within firms using the economic toolkit. So we distinguish three specializations within business economics. So organizational economics, finance and accounting and control. And uh, to give one example of uh, a topic that might be interesting within uh, business economics is uh, the initial public offerings. So this is a way for companies uh, to acquire additional money or additional to get access to the capital market. And um, before uh, the, so at the end of last year, uh, Ahold Delherse, so for the Dutch people, you might know it, it's the, so uh, Albert Heijn, uh, the supermarket uh, chain is part of it. Uh, they announced that they were planning to uh, list uh, the retailer Bol.com, which in the Netherlands is like the Amazon um, type of uh, um, uh, company. Uh, to list it uh, in this year, so in 2022. So it's one way of uh, getting additional access uh, to capital for these companies, but also perhaps more broadly known uh, for everyone, TikTok. There was a lot of rumors before, uh, so in the past few years, that it might also offer, uh, it would, might also go public. But um, in a recent uh, interview by uh, the CEO, he was claiming that uh, it's not necessarily a priority because it's still TikTok is a very young company and they want to exploit uh, the different options of growth and to make uh, better decisions about where to invest and where not. And that uh, the initial public offering might be something that is still not for the short run, but at the long run, it might be a way to get additional uh, access to capital markets. So to uh, highlight what the differences are between economics and business economics. So economics is really about decisions on the scarcity and business economics is using economics as to explain decisions within firms. So business economics is more of a subdivision within economics. So with really specific types of problems within firms. So some of you might also be interested in business administration. So business administration is uh, closely connected to business economics. So in terms of problems, we are addressing very similar problems. It's problems within companies or addressing decisions within uh, businesses. Uh, what is the difference? So business administration approaches these problems um, from different disciplines. So from economics, but also from psychology, from management. So it's much broader in their approach how to solve these problems. In business economics, the approach is very economical and quantitative. That means that the focus is on an analytical way of solving these business problems. And the focus is much more on using economic, the, the economic toolbox to solve these problems. And when it comes to which one fits better, it's a matter of taste. So both are interested in analyzing problems within firms, but their approach is different where business administration is more broad and business economics is most focused on quantitative and analytical skills. 
And uh, finally, of course, very important when making a decision is what can I do after my bachelor? So our experience is that most of our students continue with a master either at our university or at another university, but they continue doing a master after the bachelor program. However, uh, more recently, we start seeing also students going into, uh, after the bachelor, going into the industry. And our experience is that students have very good career perspectives. So within three months of their graduation, they are able to find a job on their level. What type of uh, jobs do you, can you, uh, would you, uh, where do you see economists? So you basically, you see economists everywhere. So any big firm needs an economist, but also at government, you see many economists. So the majority of our students end up in governmental institutions, so nonprofit sector. They end up in banks uh, and is industry, uh, a large part also do in the consultancy firms. Some go uh, and uh, start their own company and a few end up uh, at the university uh, as a researcher or, or teacher. But we have students everywhere, so in the Dutch Central Bank, uh, in the big banks, uh, but also in big firms and in the big consultancy firms like PricewaterCooper, KPMG, uh, Ernst Young, uh, Deloitte. Uh, so you name it, we have alumni uh, walking around. So the career perspectives are very good and um, the students end up in very diverse types of jobs and some are connected a bit to their specialization. But uh, yeah, you could you, you don't see a clear pattern uh, where students end up. So if you do economics, most of them end up a bit on average more often in governmental institutions and uh, perhaps in the more uh, the, the Dutch Central Bank, for example. If they do uh, business economics, then they tend to enter a bit more into industry and consultancy. But uh, overall, we see economics and business economics students ending up in very similar jobs. Uh, where there is some variation with specialization. So the career perspectives are good. That's good to know when making a choice for an education. And uh, now I will give the microphone back to Paula and she will tell you uh, something about how to make the right choice. Thank you, Sylvia. And uh, hello again. Um, making the right choice or the right study choice is a really important step towards your future career. Um, and that's why it's also really good that you uh, are attending the session today um, to get a better picture of the program and what uh, the university has to offer. You just heard for, about the content um, of economics and business economics and uh, its advantages from Sylvia, our program director, as well as the great career prospects. Um, part of my job is actually to help students make study related choices. That's why I'm here today uh, to help you find out if economics and business economics is the right match for you. One uh, way to find out about that is to hear about the experiences um, from current students. That's why I'm really glad that we have two students here today. And uh, I would like, uh, because they will tell you more about their experiences and their rationale for choosing um, for this program. Now I would like to give the floor to Tomasz, um, who will tell you more about his experiences. Yes, hello, uh, my name is Tomasz Kreuzinger and I originally come from the Czech Republic. Um, well, I am in the second year of economics and business economics and I've specialized in the major of economics, which is the smaller of the two courses, uh, but I can only recommend it. Um, definitely, there's a lot of things going through your head right now. Um, the overview were big, so I'll try and provide a bit of personal detail to the whole story. Um, how it actually is studying economics and what can you expect. Um, the program in general, what you can really value about it um, and what we agree on with most of the people that I know is that economics provides you uh, very strong tools for understanding the world. We, after all, live in a so-called economized society and you can see that cost and benefit analyses rule the development of our towns, complex global supply chains support our everyday purchases, and economics is more and more becoming the important dimension of the political plane. The 
program gives you those tools uh, that can make you think in both global and local dimensions, assess information critically, which I find very important. And if you want to, which is a bit of my goal, it provides you with the abilities to change the systems in which we work now in such a way as to enhance welfare of people around the world. I know it sounds a bit idealistic, but uh, well, some people have to do it and we ought to try. Uh, the other thing that is mentionable uh, and very important is that it is not only economics in general, it is also the place that you will be staying at. Um, it is Amsterdam, it is the Ufa, which is right next to the city center. Me personally, uh, it might be your case as well. Um, I had the luck of getting into a student accommodation that are not provided by the university, but where you're kind of chosen by the other people that already live there. This means that, and I can only recommend such an option, uh, you get to experience the proper Amsterdam student life. Um, you do study hard throughout the week, if you want to, maybe not so hard, but uh, that's up to you. Uh, you do meet up with people in the evenings in the kitchen, you might have a dinner together and so on. And if you feel like parties, then there's always parties uh, on the weekend. Uh, also, what is interesting about Amsterdam and might be the case for you as well, is that the part of my daily routine is cycling eight kilometers to school every day, uh, which uh, will definitely keep you in great shape and will definitely motivate you to, you know, once you finish that, actually uh, whatever else you have to do at school is uh, very easy to finish up, especially throughout the winter with the fog and the mist everywhere. The city center of the town is definitely lovely to walk around. Um, if the weather is willing, which now it's turning for the better, uh, you can sit down next to a canal, have a drink with a friend after a lecture or two. And Uva in general, about the campus, it provides you with great facilities, both the professorial ones, uh, the people are open to questions, as well as the so-called hardware, um, such as classrooms, uh, the library, etc. Um, yeah, I can only recommend uh, coming here and maybe one last thing to remember is that the bachelor's area will really be, if you choose for it, uh, what you make of it. So there can be the basic bachelor's where you just barely pass all the courses and you are kind of uninterested, or you can be active, uh, participate. Um, there's tons and tons of different activities surrounding your university. You can join associations, you, you know, just be on the lookout even though it might be annoying to have so many things in the email, just subscribe to the newsletter and maybe there will be an interesting activity coming your way. So if you feel like you want to experience something new, go for Amsterdam, go for Ufa. Now I would like to uh, give the word to the other student, to Judith, who is from the Netherlands and will provide a bit of a different perspective maybe. Yeah, well, hello. Um, I'm Judith, I'm from the Netherlands, and I'm currently in my Master of Economics and Business, of, of Economics, and I did the Bachelor of Economics and Business Economics at UvA. And um, yeah, why did I choose for this study? Uh, in high school, I already really liked the um, uh, economics and making the decisions about the scarce, uh, scarcity in the world and the mathematical approach on problems. And uh, when I went into all like all the interview, like the Q and A sessions, as you doing now, I already saw that the um, yeah the economics and business economics at the UFA gives me a really good insight, but also gave me uh, a lot of um, options to choose and actually personalize my study. Because when I um, when I finished my high school, I actually didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to find out like during my bachelor and in this uh, and this study is perfect for that so uh, after I found out that I actually wanted to go to Amsterdam because I knew that I wanted to study in, in the Netherlands and in Netherlands you have a couple of cities you can choose from actually from Utrecht but the city Amsterdam really um, yeah really um, was really attractive for me because I really liked an international approach to um, uh, of the city and also uh, the UFA. UFA itself is, if you compare it also because of the UFA, uh, Amsterdam, you have two universities viewing the UFA and the approach from the UFA uh, interested me more because in my uh, 
um, opinion, it was more international and uh, more in, in the city. Because um, the, the campus, as Thomas told you, is a really beautiful campus next to the city center. And it really makes you feel like you're studying in a nice city and really enjoying your student life. Um, for instance, when I finish a long day at the library, I can just uh, go outside to Uva and you walk two meters and you're already at a nice cafe where you can have a beer with some friends. Um, or you can go to like a nice sports association that's that's around the corner. There are lots of options. Um, so yeah, that really took my, uh, my attention. And also uh, I would like to have an international career and having the basis in the UFA with all the international students you will meet during your uh, tutorial groups and all the projects you will do, you really get a new, uh, nice and um, important background how to work in international uh, surroundings and how to work with different uh, cultures. Um, so that's something that really um, yeah, took my attention. And then um, yeah, self, uh, for myself, I took the specialization in economics and I'm now doing the master uh, development economics. Um, and that's also a thing that I really liked about the UFA is that there are a lot of options to, if you wanna do a master, there are a lot of different options to do your master here. Um, um, yeah, so that's, that's something if you, um, yeah, it's maybe a bit too much for in, uh, in, the, in the future already. But if you really think about like, I wanna be here on a long-term basis, there are all, also a lot of options. For masters, but also for nice jobs. Uh, Amsterdam has su such interesting business uh, culture here, so you can find enough uh, companies where you can also do an internship if you want. Because um, yeah, the study gives you the the space and the opportunity to do also an internship if you want. Um, so um, yeah, that's uh, in short why, why I choose for the UFA and why I choose for economics and business economics. Thank you, you did, and uh, thank you, Tomas. Um, now um, that you heard from our inspiring students and um, our dedicated program director, let me sum up the advantages of studying economics and business economics at the University of Amsterdam. First of all, we have a challenging and interesting program that provides you with excellent uh, chances at the job market. Um, secondly, you have the freedom to choose and make the program your own, like in the first semester of year three, when you can choose between an internship, a minor or studying abroad. Um, the UFA also has an excellent international reputation. Maybe that's why uh, some of you are here today to hear more about it. And we have more than 90 different nationalities on campus, an aspect which I really, really like. Um, uh, so that's really nice because you can interact with people from different cultures and learn a lot and improve your social skills that way as well and your cultural um, knowledge. So in sum, we offer an inspiring education that will prepare you very well for the international job market. Um, and um, now next, uh, the next slide, please. Yes, um, uh, as I said, uh, this is an overview of the entry requirements. As I said uh, before, um, uh, we will organize a separate session um, about uh, yeah, how to apply um, on Thursday. Uh, you can find the link to register in the chat. What's important uh, for you to know are the application deadlines. That is April 1 for um, non-EU students and May 1st uh, for EU or uh, Dutch students. And um, I, I also wanted to uh, let you know that we have the UVA matching, which is a, a really nice way also to see if the program is a good fit for you. And so um, if the program, if everything you heard so far sounds appealing to you, um, let me tell you more about the next steps. Um, I would recommend to delve deeper into the program, explore the information that is uh, online, uh, you can also uh, watch the recording again uh, if you are, if you want some more information. Um, and we will also share some useful links in the chat at the end of this session. I would also strongly recommend to register for the Experience Day, where we, you can actually experience firsthand how education looks like at our faculty. You can follow a lecture and a seminar online. This takes place in April and the registration opens in uh, two weeks. And if the program feels like the right match uh, for you, which we all hope, of course, uh, make sure to apply on time.
Um, we hope to see many of you again in uh, September 2022. Um, this was uh, it um, uh, yeah, from the presentation part. We will now start um, with the Q&A and answer your questions. Um, so if your questions, you can have a look at the Q&A button maybe and see if uh, there's a question that you really like to be answered. Or if you have an additional question, you can still ask it. Um, I would like to ask the speakers to turn their cameras back on and um, we will start with the first question that got the most likes. Um, that is um, from June. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. I would like to study finance in particular. Is this course uh, right for me? And what is special about this program compared to business administration? Sylvia, you already said something about the difference between business administration and economics and business economics. Both have the specialization finance. Maybe you can tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you. So indeed, uh, both uh, business economics and business administration have a specialization in finance. Uh, what is different between the two? In terms of specialization, there's not much difference because it's finance, uh, so you will get uh, the same courses in the specialization part. But this is only the last uh, semester of your education. So the way towards this semester is very different. So within economics, the focus is much more on this quantitative and analytical skills. So this is something that some companies uh, really uh, like uh, to see in students. So these skills are uh, trained better within economics because we pay more attention to it. Then within business administration, the focus is much more on looking at it from different disciplines. So if this is an approach that you find more interesting, then business administration would be uh, the better choice. So I think it's mostly about what you find appealing in terms of uh, the way towards the specialization. So with uh, in, uh, economics and business economics, you will get a better uh, training in uh, quantitative and uh, analytical skills. And within business administration, the focus will be on approaching, approaching the problems from different, uh, uh, yeah. But for finance, I, I myself would advise uh, economics and business economics, but that's a personal uh, advice. Thank you for clarifying that. And then we have another question. Um, are there opportunities open to bachelor students to work as research assistants during their second and third year? Um, Sylvia, can I give that question to you as well? Thank you. Yeah, yeah so uh, there are some opportunities. Uh, uh, in the majority of cases, uh, because in the second year, the research skills are still uh, uh, more limited uh, than uh, most of the students uh, in the second and the third year are more involved in uh, doing uh, assistance with teaching, like a more admin type of, of jobs. And this is a way to get them into the more uh, research uh, type of positions. Uh, but we do have like that we use that we uh, recruit students uh, for uh, for these type of tasks. Uh, so there are some opportunities. But I do think that uh, priority is given to the later year students, so uh, third year bachelor, uh, master students. But yeah, there's a way to get there, and um, and you can also talk to to teachers that you think like have interesting or uh, might have interesting research, uh, whether there are opportunities. Uh, so there is uh, some things, but yeah, you uh, you have to work a bit towards it. Yes. Thank you. Um, we have another question about uh, study abroad from Powell and um, uh, how you can finance that. Um, uh, it might be good uh, to know that um, the study abroad, we have this whole system here with the partner universities and the UVA has a lot of partner universities. And it's good to know that you pay the that you just have to pay the tuition fees basically that you pay at our university. So you for the partner university, you don't have to pay additional fees. And then they are different depending on where you want to go. The prices are quite different, of course, the living costs. But there are uh, some scholarships and grants that you can apply for support. I hope that uh, answers your question. And uh, if you're interested uh, to go on exchange, it's good to know that every year we also have an exchange office at our university, at our faculty even. And every year a study abroad fair is organized, uh, which is a really nice way um, uh, where to find out uh, what is a good option for you. So there is a lot of support for that. 
Um, and then, um, yeah, we have a question, which are the accommodation of options? Um, does the UVA offer anything? Can I maybe give that question to one of the students? Could you maybe say a bit more about the housing and how you approached it? Um, is there one of you who wants to say something or has some tips about that? Yeah, um, yeah, just to be fair, um, it's quite hard to find a house. Uh, there are some students uh, housing in the Netherlands. If you're Dutch, you can already sign up for uh, student voting web when you're 16 and uh, just do that. Like I will totally recommend it because it's really hard to find a house for uh, for like a, a really nice price. But if you're there in Amsterdam and you will get to know people, um, uh, you will have, eventually you will find a nice house, but sometimes I I moved a couple times because then you have a house for uh, for a bit, but it's not ideal. Maybe not in, in your favorite neighborhood, or maybe the room is not as big or too big as what you want. Um, but housing is quite um, a problem at this moment in Amsterdam. Um, I know, correct me if I'm wrong, that the UVA is supporting international students with this a bit. Um, and for uh, Dutch students, uh, use uh, Facebook, uh, Kamernet, and all those kinds of websites. And uh, tell everyone you know that you're searching for a house, so eventually you will find something. Yeah, thank you. Good idea also to always use your network, of course. Um, we have another more practical question, which program is being used for this bachelor? I'm currently studying in Utrecht and they are using Blackboard uh, at the um, at our faculty, we, or at the UVA, we use Canvas, um, so it's a slightly different program, but you will get uh, familiar with it uh, quickly. Um, um, then let's, let me go to the next question. Um, how many years continues the progress process of studying economics? Um, I'm not sure if I understand this question correctly, but the bachelor lasts for three years and then you can, uh, most students or many students decide to do a master, a follow on master, which at our faculty, the masters are one year. So in total bachelor and master, if you complete all the courses in the nominal time frame, you can complete it uh, within four years. And then we have another question. Would you recommend this course if uh, you are not very good at mathematics? Um, Sylvia, can I give that one to you? Or um, if one of the students wants to add something, feel free to do so as well, because you both did economics where you get mathematics one and mathematics two. Let me do a first attempt and then I would be great to hear Judith and uh, Thomas's uh, uh, opinion uh, from the student side. So um, the economics part within, um, so within economics, uh, mathematics is, uh, is clo closely connected to mathematics uh, B in high school uh, and statistics is closely connected to uh, mathematics A uh, in the Dutch high school. Uh, so um, I think what is important is uh, perhaps not so much being good in mathematics. So it's of course you need to know a bit of uh, <laughs> the basics of mathematics, mathematics and uh, you will also get courses in mathematics, but it is mostly also whether you find the topics interesting enough to spend time on uh, uh, getting better in mathematics and uh, putting in more effort. So if you are not so good in mathematics, then mostly for mathematics, yeah, you need to put in more effort. But if you are interested in mathematics and you are interested in the economic topics, then uh, I mean, uh, then it's then you could follow it. So it's not, uh, for example, econometrics where you require much more mathematics. Um, and then within uh, economics and business economics, the business economics major is a bit less mathematical than the economics uh, major. But uh, Judith or Thomas, uh, perhaps your opinion. Thomas, perhaps. Yes. Um, yeah, definitely. If you if you're not such a fan of mathematics, then I would recommend going for the business economics because the economics major so far and it is going to just continue in the same way is mainly about the quantitative analysis of uh, things happening in the economy. But um, I would say that mathematics one is a lot when you come to university. So definitely be prepared for that because it's also a great difference between how you learn at university and how you learn in high school, wherever you are. At least that was the case for me. Um, so I had to put in much more time than what I was used to. 
Uh, but apart from that, I would say that even if you do not like mathematics and you still like economics, it is definitely doable. But take into account that there is quite a lot of statistics related courses as well. For instance, research projects and so on, where you analyze data through software. Um, it's, it's not impossible to do. You get a lot of guidance, but it is still there and it makes up a significant amount of the course itself. Thank you for sharing your experiences and uh, for your advice. Um, I have another question, which is nice um, uh, for the students um, uh, or to hear your um, experiences, because Maria is wondering what difficulties did you meet as a first year student? Can maybe you or Tomasz, can some of one of you tell us a bit more about the first year potential difficulties or maybe some advice as well? Oh, do, you, do you want to go or should I go? Okay. Um, well, I started uh, during Corona time, so that was definitely the biggest problem for me. But your um, outlooks are much better. Uh, we assume that Corona is not going to come back and that you can just be uh, at the campus. Um, then definitely the previously mentioned housing was not easy to find, especially with the uncertainties of Corona. Should I get a contract for half a year if I do not even know if I'm going to stay in the country for the international of us? Um, and then getting used to the university a bit, um, kind of, you have to switch up a lot of, uh, your, uh, life routines, but I wouldn't say that necessarily, uh, there were any major obstacles. It's mainly just a difference and you do have to study much more than what you're used to. That is indeed the case. Thank you um, for sharing that. Um, we have another question from Joris. I'm really interested in particular in the behavior of consumers. Is this uh, study the best economic study or are there more suitable ones? Sylvia, could you say something about that? Yeah, I can say uh, a bit. <laughs> so it, it depends, of course, on what you exactly are interested in. But uh, economics and mostly microeconomics spends a lot of time on uh, investigating the behavior of consumers. But of course, yeah, um, so um, it depends on what, so what, what, how, how deep you want to go. I think that in particular, all economics and business economics uh, studies will uh, have like micro one and micro two. So if you are mostly interested in consumer behavior, then you should go for an economics major. And uh, but I think all universities uh, within um, um, economics and business economics will have uh, this focus on uh, behavior of consumers. What we have within uh, in Amsterdam, but also some other universities are uh, also catching up on that. But we have like a, a priority uh, area also on behavioral economics, where it's more like uh, uh, thinking about uh, uh, how people behave uh, more in general, not necessarily in, uh, in, in consumer behavior. And uh, we have electives and also within the master, there's like this specialization in this uh, type of uh, 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 area. So yeah, I hope this answers. Thank you. Um, we have another similar question from Demos. Um, if someone would like to become a marketing manager, would this be a good choice or would you recommend to do business administration? Sylvia, what is uh, your suggestion? Um, yeah, it, it, difficult because also I think within business administration, as far as I know, uh, they don't really offer a track in, in marketing. But I do think that uh, for if you are mostly interested in, in marketing, uh, which is like more uh, then then it's 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 more closely connected to business administration, where the focus is also more on manage, manager behavior. So of course you, I can see why economics could also be interesting uh, there, and why economics and business economics might be. Uh, but I can imagine that if you're mostly your 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 interest are, is mostly in marketing, then I, I think my advice would be business administration um, and. Uh, but there are also, and um, of course, I, I also want to help with making the choices. Perhaps there are other universities that offer better marketing programs uh, in that respect uh, that are, have a more focus on marketing as a specialization. So if you are really interested in marketing, uh, 
but yeah, again, I uh, you should look a bit more into business administration because perhaps they have like a, a specialization in it. But uh, yeah, I know there are also other universities that have really like uh, specializations in marketing that might be a better choice. Then. Thank you. Um, the next question is, uh, is it compulsory to attend all lectures? Um, there are different uh, attendance requirements for different courses. Um, uh, so it's not, there's not a simple answer. Usually there are attendance requirements for tutorial groups, not so much for lectures. Um, I was wondering, maybe Judith or Tomasz, can you say something about your experience with the attendance requirements? Um, yeah, for me, the, the lectures uh, are not like you don't have to go to the lectures because the, like I experienced my bachelor uh, like the beginning when there was not Corona. Um, but uh, lectures are really nice because in the beginning of the study, there are all the nice um, locations in Amsterdam. So in the Concertgebouw or in Carré, like all nice theaters. So that's the reason actually where I went. Because um, they were also not uh, recorded, but now with the lectures, uh, a lot of things uh, changed, and now lectures are recorded. But in general, uh, the lectures you don't have to like. There's no compulsory um, attendance, but for the tutorial groups, for when you are in a smaller group with one teacher and you're gonna do the exercises, then there is sometimes, but mostly only first year courses have for like how. Um, more you go into your studies, it's more your own responsibility. And that's something I really liked also about this study. Um, I had some courses that it was um, compulsory to come, but most of it is actually your own responsibility. And um, yeah, the, the tutorials and the lectures are both really useful to go to. So in the end, if you're a good student and you want to have a nice grade, you will go to the lectures and you will go to the tutorials. But if you have one week that you're not feeling well or anything, you're not even in trouble, um, if you're not uh, if you're not going, so um, yeah, that gives you a lot of freedom and a lot of responsibility, and that's something I really liked. Thank you for sharing. Um, we have one more question. Um, if you're an international student with no pr prior background in economics, is it too difficult to catch up? Uh, Tomas, could you maybe say something about this by any chance? Yeah, I, I didn't do any economics before I came here um, and I would definitely say that the uh, whole program is structured in such a way that even if you had zero uh, idea about economics then um, everything will get to you um, it is not a problem um, even if you do not have any background from high school in the Czech Republic uh, we do not have economics at all in high school um, it's not even a subject or anything and uh, everything worked out fine so don't worry, it should be okay. Thank you. Um, I had just had a look at the re remaining questions and most of them were answered already. So I would uh, suggest that we uh, can conclude the session now and uh, we can stay and answer the individual sessions, uh, the rest of us. Maybe Sylvia, do you have maybe some remaining final concluding words? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for joining. And um, yeah, in the end, uh, I think you should uh, choose a study that uh, you like the type of topics that you are uh, offered and that you like the type of uh, questions that are addressed. So uh, skills are important and uh, being good in mathematics is important. Having some economics background might help you, but these are not overcome. So this you can overcome by putting in more effort in, in getting good in it. So if you are liking the, the topics uh, and uh, you also are uh, interested uh, in a mathematical approach, then uh, this is the study for you. Uh, of course, this is a lot of information. So please also attend the uh, uh, experience day because there you get an idea about uh, what it is exactly about. So we go into a topic and you get a better idea about uh, what the math level is. And uh, this can make your choice uh, even better. So good luck uh, with making your decision. And uh, if uh, you decide to come to the UVA, I hope to welcome you somewhere in the future. So thank you for joining and uh, good luck with the decision.